What's up everybody, Super Rhino 57 here with a tutorial which I have not done in a very long time. This one is going to be a little bit weird. Um, as you can see I got a harvester from Mine Factory Reloaded, a farming station from Ender.io, and a planter from Mine Factory Reloaded. The reason being is today's tutorial is more of an overview on automated farms because I know um, one of my videos a while back, whenever I set up my automated farm on my Sky Factory, it was fairly popular. So I assume people are looking up automated farms. No, you know, no surprise. There's not a lot out there for automated farms as far as how to set them up, what's better, because you got all these different mods in Sky Factory. So that's what I wanted to go over. I wanted to do some, or show some layouts, show some setups, give you a better understanding of automated farms. And as far as what's best, what do you need, what you know, what what would fit your needs best. So let's go into this giant farming room, and all of these are set up with the Ender IO farming station, which this is the max build for the farming station. This is what it covers. I believe it's a 15 by 15. Let's see, 5, 10, 15. Yes, a 15 by 15 area farming station directly center. Now it does have to have power. Now, in this particular case, I've got a Tesseract underneath it, providing only power. And then, everything goes up. It's using as a Visio Ho. You do have to have the Octatic Capacitor to increase its range. So, remember that. In order to get this 15 by 15 you do need a Octatic Capacitor in your farming station. And then, I have it configured so that the output is coming off the top which is then drawn in from the node into this chest. So that's a simple little setup here. Um, yeah, it's, just, it's fairly basic, but at the same time, um, there are variances. I also have a lily pad of fertility from x Reliquary just to kind of help increase crop growth a little bit because they don't do much on magical crops, but this way I can have an output. Anyways, um, real quick over here, this is my power source, and yes, it is currently being fed. It's going into two different Tesseract, which is feeding all my farms. Anyways, moving on, next we have a farming station, and this one is set up. Oh, I don't have it set up. Oh, it does. It is set up. That's weird. Do I not have... Yeah, this should be set up. To receive. Hmm. That's odd. It should be pushing these out. Yeah. I don't know. It should be pushing them out through the Tesseract, and the Tesseract should be putting everything in that chest. Anyways, with the Indryo farm, I did set up a fertilizer from Mine Factory Reloaded. Now, when we started, or when I started setting everything up, I believe I put three stacks of fertilizer in here, and yeah, it does nothing. It does absolutely nothing. So, Mine Factory Reloaded Fertilizer does not affect magical crops. FYI, I thought I'd throw that in there just to kind of help better explain things. But as far as the farming station goes, I have a Tesseract underneath, which is supposed to be drawing items from and giving power to the farming station. It's giving power. It drew some items, so I'm not 100% sure what the dealio is. Moving on, over here I have two Tesseracts set up. One to push in uh, power, the other one to draw out items. This one seems to be working. See, it is pushing. I'm guessing that's where this came from. I wonder if it can do input and output at the same time. That, that might be something worth looking into. So here's using two Tesseracts. It is the most compact automated farm. So again, you have the farming station from Ender.io, a pretty high-powered hoe, just because you know it's going to wear down durability pretty quickly with all these crops. So you want to be able to leave it alone for a while. And then another Tesseract on top set up to draw items out. So that might explain that. It may need a separate Tesseract for items and or for input and output. Now, over here is a very highly efficient farm. I have power going in underneath through just energy conduit. No Tesseract underneath. So it's only got the one Tesseract, which is right here, drawing power. Now, this little butter 
debugger. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, this little thing right here, autonomous activator from thermal expansion, it acts as an entity. But what I have set up for is a watering can reinforced because on my sky factory there are a couple crops I only got two seeds on and I need to grow quickly, I need to multiply, I need more seeds. So what I do is I do put it directly underneath this autonomous activator with the watering can reinforced. Let's disable that and you see all this area got watered. The reinforced watering can makes these crops grow really fast. So if we go over here and take a look, it should increase as it harvests. We're at 28. So yeah, it should increase as it harvests. Okay, it is pushing things out, so there we go, 32, 35. So if you need to grow crops quickly, this is a setup for you. You want to put the autonomous activator above it, at least two or three blocks higher, and make sure it is facing down. See, right there. Make sure it is set to right click. I just did that to turn it off. Uh, redstone is ignored. You don't really have to worry about input or output. If all you're doing is the, is the watering can. So that's it's as simple as that. Watering can, right click, give it power. Boom. It is now watering these crops and growing pretty quickly. See, already up at 49. So that's a nice little setup for you to help uh, get you further ahead in your uh, automated farm. Now for the reinforced watering can, in case you are wondering, it is four bedrockium ingots, which can be quite expensive. You have four triple compressed cobblestone, and then four quadruple compressed, as well as a block of diamond. That gives you one bedrockium ingot. Okay. But also another trick is the soul fragment right here. To get the soul fragment, you need to craft an etheric sword. And an etheric sword is two unstable ingots and a piece of obsidian. Now once you get the etheric sword, open up your inventory, place it in your little crafting table or crafting station right here. You'll see the soul fragment. Once you click the soul fragment, put it in your inventory, it will remove one of your hearts underneath. You will only have nine hearts after this point. So that is why it's called a soul fragment. I'm going to turn you off. You're annoying. So, there is some difficulty in getting this overpowered farm, but it can come in handy. So it's really, what are you willing to sacrifice? What do you have? You know, how good's your armor? How long can you survive without this extra heart? So, yeah, there's that. So here's four Ender IO farms that I have set up for you. Now, one thing I'd always been wondering is with these four, with Ender IO, farming stations fairly automated. All you need to do is put in a hoe, tell it input output. A little bit more complex is Mine Factory Reloaded because, for one, you have all these different upgrades for your Mine Factory farm, as well as you need a planter and a harvester. So you kind of need to get everything from the harvester put it in an inventory, and then take your seeds to go back to your planter. Now, that in mind, it is a bit more complex. However, this is a fully maxed out mine factory reloaded farm. I used wheat here just because it was easier. Okay? Okay, sorry about that. I had to take a brief pause. Anyways, there is some drawbacks to this. First of all, this is a 25 by 25 square piece of land. That is how big the harvester and the planter can handle. This is with the full the max upgrade of emerald. Oh, also, when using the harvester, you do need. Let's get a couple of them. It does have an output of sludge, and if it fills up on sludge, it will stop running. So I usually put some sort of tank on here, and as it gets full, I'll replace it. Also, you can use a sludge boiler put the sludge into the sludge boiler. It will have an area of effect which if you get close to it it will give you nausea or hunger. I think I think hunger. So be forewarned on that. But anyways, this massive farm, let's get a watering can and we'll get the reinforced. There we go. Now Drawbacks to having a farm this massive. Yes, it looks nice because you have a giant farm that you do not have to tend to. This machine and the planter, which the planter is down here. The, 
Uh, by the way, the planter does have to be underneath the center block. So it looks up and then covers that area. Okay? Um, I do have this set up. This tesseract is providing power. I have another tesseract underneath that planter providing power. And then all the items get spit out the back, which, if you put a chest there, automatically goes into the chest. Let's see, it gathers wheat. And then I have transfer node with a filter and speed to, bleh, to take the seeds directly out of here and put in the planter. This way it won't affect your wheat. Now, again, the drawbacks of this giant massive farm if I sit here and I make these crops right here go really quickly and get a couple of them fully ready to go okay there's those now I'll come over here to this corner do 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 okay now considering it hasn't harvested those yet I'm gonna assume it's oh there it goes it's right in that line so now it is going to slowly move its way forward. Let's get some in between so we can get a better idea. Come on. Where are you at? There we go. So we have plenty here to harvest. Let's see. Oh, just harvested that. So now, okay. I think I had it reversed. I think it's moving back to front. So, it is harvested up there. So it should harvest back here next. It is fairly slow because, see, it just took that one. But these three right here, side by side, is the ones I want you to see how slow it moves. See, yeah, that's fairly quickly, but realize that's about person speed. You can harvest those yourselves, same speed. And it's covering this massive area. So it takes a while. Look at how long these have been ready to go. So that is a loss of production. And then get the seeds back, and then the planter is about equally slow speed. See, it hasn't even replanted these yet. So there is drawbacks to this massive area. It does take a longer time to inspect and harvest and plant. So I just wanted everybody to understand all the different aspects when making a farm. See, it harvested those. It does... I, I believe the Ender IO farming station does move a little bit quicker, but where it's covering a smaller station, it can go back quicker. And then the nice thing about farming station is not only does it harvest, it replants. So this right here, it's already ready to harvest. Let's grow a couple. I'm not sure where it's at in its uh, cycle. See, it just harvested it and replants automatically. So all those blank spots you see in the farm do not happen. You never miss out. So that's why I prefer the farming station, even though you can get a larger area with the harvester. But it's to your own preference. If you're not in a hurry, like in this case, it's just harvesting wheat. If you've got plenty of food to last you a while, this may be the way to go. Give you more food faster. So maybe for like a community, this would be really effective. But I just wanted to give a brief explanation on all the different setups, all the different uh, ways you can do an automated farm in Sky Factory. Okay, so you got the automated input output, which I'm pretty sure is the problem right here is that it's set up to go input and output. Let's let's try. I want to set up another tesseract. Oh, we gotta land. Oh, come on. There we go. Shift click all send and set so let's see if it puts it out hmm oh it's no longer oh yeah there we go I had a I forgot I had to reconfigure it there we go so it did push it out and the seed is right there see um, that seed did not come from harvesting a plant. Well, it did, but it didn't come from removing the plant. Sometimes with magical crops, you have a chance of getting extra seeds when harvesting. And so the farming station does take care of that. So, that is why I like the farming station better. It's easily configured, more automated, quicker, and more compact. Everything is done within these three blocks. Except for that, which is just for power. 
But so to each their own. I just want to give an explanation. If you learned something or if you like this uh, video, please leave a like down below. If you have any questions or comments, let me know. And I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.